Everything we receive in the new covenant is received by faith. That means you need to learn what faith is, how faith works, and how to grow in your faith. Jesus said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. Life is not simply about existing here on earth and waiting for heaven. No, life is about abundance. You and I were created to worship God in spirit and in truth. Worship is much more than an act. Worship is a lifestyle. When Jesus is at the center of your life, your priorities will change and so will the flow of God's blessing into your life. From Faith Life Worship Center in Naples, Florida, this is Pastor Heath Jarvis. One, two, three.
Let's join Pastor Heath's message from Faith Life Worship Center. God is a God of poetic justice. God will use what the enemy had meant for your destruction and use it to destroy your enemy. Amen. He, he's, he's really good at that. In fact, he will even use your enemy to be your provision. Amen. Bible says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just, right? Yes. God will use your enemy to be your provision. In Numbers chapter 14, Joshua and Caleb are telling the Israelites not to listen to the report of the ten spies. They said, only do not rebel against the Lord. Let's go in and take this land. I know the ten spies, they've, they've sown fear into all of us. Don't rebel against the Lord. Don't fear the people of this land. We, we can take this land. It says, neither fear the people of the land, for they are bread for us. In other words, these people are going to be our source of provision. You're afraid of them, but not only are we able to overcome them, they're going to be a source of nourishment for us. They're going to be a source. We're not going to eat them. <laughs> they're going to be a source of provision for us. Their defense and the shadow of protection is removed from over them. But the Lord is with us. Fear them not. God will use your enemy to be your provision. That's my God. Don't be afraid of the inhabitants of the land. They're bread for us. Esther chapter 8, <clears throat> verse 1. That same day, King Xerxes gave Queen Esther the estate of Haman. Now that he's dead, he has no use for it anymore. Gave Queen Esther the estate of Haman, the enemy of the Jews, and Mordecai came into the presence of the king, for Esther had told how he was related to her. He was her cousin. The king took off his signet ring, which he had reclaimed from Haman, and he presented it to Mordecai, and Esther appointed him over Haman's estate. So Mordecai was this guy who was supposed to get killed by Haman, but instead, he, in he inherited all of Haman's estate. He became a very rich man. This is just like God, folks. Amen. To take the wealth of your enemy, the position of your enemy, the prosperity of your enemy, the very person who was trying to destroy you, the very person who was rooting for your failure, to take your enemy's stuff and give it to you. Yes. Not only does Mordecai have Haman's wealth, and Haman's estate, but he also has the king's signet ring. This is powerful. A signet ring represents power and authority. The king has this ring, and the ring is what he would use to stamp things, to stamp decrees. <clears throat> so God is promoting Mordecai, a Jew, to a position of power in a foreign government. He is now the second in command over the Persian Empire. Does that remind you of anybody else in the Bible? How about Daniel? Was promoted second in command over the Babylonian Empire. How about Joseph? Was promoted second in command over the Egyptian Empire. These Jewish people are ruling over foreigners. Amen. That's, that's how good our God is. By the way, the Persian Empire... The Bible says that Xerxes reigned from India to Kush. Kush is present-day Sudan, northeastern Africa, India all the way to Africa. This was a huge, powerful empire, and Mordecai just got bumped up to second in command. Or did he? Let's read on. Verse 7. King Xerxes replied to Queen Esther and to Mordecai the Jew, because Haman attacked the Jews, I have given his estate to Esther, <clears throat> and they have impaled him on the pole that he set up. Now, watch this. Write another decree in the king's name in behalf of the Jews as seems best to you. And seal it with the king's signet ring, for no document written in the king's name and sealed with his ring can be revoked. So Mordecai may be second in command, but the king just gave Mordecai the authority 
to decree whatever he wanted and to use the king's authority to do so. So he may be second in command, but from this perspective, Mordecai's calling the shots. He's running the show. So let's see what Mordecai wrote using the king's authority. Verse 10. Mordecai wrote in the name of King Xerxes. He sealed the dispatches with the king's signet ring and sent them by mounted couriers who rode fast horses, especially bred for the king. The king's edict granted the Jews in every city the right to assemble and protect themselves, to destroy, kill, and annihilate the armed men of any nationality or province who might attack them and their women and children, and to plunder the property of their enemies. Amen. Notice that this refers, re refers to it as the king's edict. But who wrote it? Mordecai wrote it. King didn't write this, but it, but it was it was it was presented as though it came from the king himself. You see what what a blessing this was? How powerful this is? More teaching after this. Pastor Heath Jarvis is an award-winning and internationally published songwriter and author. He is pleased to offer today's song to you as a download from our website for only 99 cents. Just go to faithlifeforshipcenter.com, then go to our store to browse our downloadable music. Each song is only 99 cents. While you're there, you can also browse our other products, like downloadable books, downloadable teaching series, and apparel. All of our products help support the cost of this broadcast and the ministry of Faith Life Worship Center in Naples, Florida. Go to faithlifeforshipcenter.com to place your order today. Let's go back to Pastor Heath's message. Now, keep in mind, this is an empire that stretches from India to Sudan. And all of these cities and all of these prov provinces, there was 127 provinces, they all understood, you better leave the Jews alone. If you were planning on starting something, you better start unplanning it. Because the Jews now have authority from the king himself. If you start anything with them, they, they legally can destroy you. Verse 12. The day appointed for the Jews to do this in all of the provinces of King Xerxes was the 13th day of the 12th month, the month of Adar. A copy of the text of the edict was to be issued as law in every province. Again, there was 127 of them. And made known to the people of every nationality so that the Jews would be ready on that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. <laughs> In other words, this edict says if you mess with the Jews, the Jews, the, the king has given the Jews the legal authority to mop you up. Let's read, let's read on. Verse 16. For the Jews, it was a time of happiness and joy. Remember, they were a lower class in the Persian Empire. They've just been promoted to cream of the crop. For the Jews, it was a time of happiness and joy, gladness and honor. In every pro province and in every city to which the edict of the king came, there was joy and gladness among the Jews with feasting and celebrating. Watch this. And many people of other nationalities became Jews because fear of the Jews had seized them. People converted to Judaism over this. People started worshiping Jehovah over this. People started worshiping Jehovah because they were afraid of getting their tails kicked by God's people. It becomes much easier to win people to your cause when people respect you. People respected the Jews, partially because they feared them. Now, I don't think we need to go through life making people fear us, but I do believe that if, if you want to be an influence in a dark world, people need to respect you. If you want people to convert to Christianity, you gotta, you've got to earn people's respect. People don't respect you shoving scripture down their throat. 
People will respect you when you show them love and respect. People don't respect someone who stands on a street corner with a megaphone near as much as they respect someone who is successful and has a good family and has good health and has a track record of success and a person who's humble enough to share how they achieve their success. I told you on Wednesday, people don't respect dictatorships, but they do respect servants with humility. Christianity has lost a lot of respect in our society today, partially because we've stood aside and we've let the world trample on our values. Amen. But the Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. Amen. We're not mice. We're the king of the jungle. Amen. Jesus told us to be as shrewd as serpents but innocent as doves. And most Christians, we've got the innocent dove routine down really good. But what about being as shrewd as a snake? If you want people to respect you, you need to present yourself in a way that engenders respect. You just might win some people over to the kingdom in the process. Amen? Now, people converted to, uh, to Judaism for another reason. They saw the benefit of it. In the Persian Empire, because of this edict, if you're a Jew, no one can mess with you. That's a good benefit. If you want to win people to Jesus, show them the benefits of being a Christian. Show them the reward of being a Christian. And you want to know the best way to show people the reward of being a Christian? By operating in the reward of being a Christian. If you want to show people the reward of kingdom citizenship, then, then live in the blessing of kingdom citizenship. Look, people want answers. People want solutions. People want their needs met. People want peace in their families, peace at the workplace. People want to be healthy. People want to be prosperous. And aren't all of those things promised in our covenant? Amen. So live in those promises, and you're not going to have a difficult time winning people to Jesus. Amen? Or you can live depressed and distressed and broke and hurt and sick, and upset, and in debt, and discouraged, and you hate your job, and you hate your marriage, and you hate your life, don't be surprised if nobody wants to worship the God you serve. Success is attractive. You want to be more effective at winning souls? Three of you do. Does anybody want to be more effective at winning souls? Well, then I think one of the things we need to do is start confronting our problems and start winning some battles. Amen? Amen? People want to follow a winner. Pastor Heath will conclude his message after this. Pastor Heath is pleased to offer today's teaching series to help you in your walk with God. Go to faithlifeworshipcenter.com right now to order your downloadable teaching series entitled The Kingdom of God. A seven-part teaching series, yours available as an instant download for just $15. Simply place your order on our secure server at faithlifeworshipcenter.com through our online store. Then we will send you an email link to download the MP3s of this powerful teaching series by Pastor Heath Jarvis. Take Pastor Heath with you wherever you go with this powerful teaching series. The Kingdom of God, yours today for just $15. Go now to faithlifeworshipcenter.com. Let's go back to Pastor Heath's message. Does anybody want to be more effective at winning souls? Well, then I think one of the things we need to do is start confronting our problems and start winning some battles. Amen? Amen? People want to follow a winner. What did Paul say? He said, follow me as I follow Christ. Now, what does the word Christ mean? The anointed one and his anointing. Follow me as I follow the anointed one and his anointing. What is the anointing? The perpetual propulsion of the power of God infused into a believer to carry out the work of the ministry. And it destroys yokes and it lifts burdens. That's what the anointing does. Follow me as I follow the 
anointing that destroys every yoke and lifts every burden. If you want your yoke destroyed and your burden lifted, then follow me because I'm following the anointing. That's how you win people to the kingdom. Follow me and I'll show you how to achieve success in the kingdom. Amen? But in order to get people to follow you, you you've got to apply that word to your own life. Amen? Esther chapter 10, then we're going to close. Just three short verses close, closes out the book of Esther. Verse 1, King Xerxes imposed tribute throughout the empire to its distant shores. And all his acts of power and might, together with a full account of the greatness of Mordecai, whom the king had promoted, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Media and Persia? Mordecai was not just a prominent figure in the Bible. Mordecai was not just a prominent figure in Jewish texts. This verse right here says that Mordecai was also written in ancient texts from other cultures as well. That's, that's a powerful testimony of the influence that this man had over other cultures. To this day, I didn't know this until I started studying this a little bit. To this day, there are Jews that still live in Iran. Persia is Iran. There are Jews that still live in Iran today and have, have lived there for centuries. And they are referred to as Esther's children. Because there's, there has been a Jewish presence in Persia for all of these centuries. They're known as Esther's children. Verse 3. Mordecai the Jew was second in rank to King Xerxes, preeminent among the Jews, and held in high esteem by his many fellow Jews because he worked for the good of his people and he spoke up for the welfare of all of the Jews. If you want people to hold you in high esteem, do good work for them. Like I said on Wednesday, be willing to serve people. Be willing to serve the body of Christ. People respect humility and service. People will respect you and they will trust you when they know that you are trying to serve their best interests and not your own. If you enjoy the ministry of Faith Life Worship Center, we would love for you to connect with us on social media. You can follow Faith Life Worship Center on Facebook or on Instagram by searching Faith Life Worship Center. You can also find Pastor Heath Jarvis on Facebook. Check out our youth group by going to Fly Faith Life Youth on Facebook or Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel by searching Faith Life Worship Center. If you still want to learn more about us, go to our website, faithlifeworshipcenter.com, where you can learn about our church, listen to other messages, find information on events, browse our store, or support our ministry financially. As much as we'd love to connect with you online, we'd love it even more if we could connect with you in person. So visit us at Faith Life Worship Center in Naples, Florida. And maybe you're tuning in today and you don't know anything about Jesus or Christianity or this God that we love and worship. Maybe you don't know anything about what it means to be in right standing with God or to know that you're on your way to heaven after you die. So give me just a couple of minutes and I'm going to give you the gospel in a nutshell. In the beginning, God created the universe, and he created the earth, and he placed mankind here on earth. Man sinned, and that forced God to remove his hand of protection and provision over man. About 4,000 years later, God loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus to earth to become the ultimate payment for man's sin. Jesus lived a sinless life. He was tempted in every single way that we are, but Jesus never bowed to that temptation. Now, unlike Jesus, all of us are born into a sin nature. We've all sinned and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. And you may say, well, I'm a pretty good person. I think if I were to die, God would give me a pass. The truth of the matter is, even your best attempt on your best day can't come close to matching the holiness of God. 
The Bible says that your righteousness in and of itself is like a used menstrual cloth. You can't measure up in and of yourself. But thank God, because of Jesus, you don't have to measure up because Jesus measured up on your behalf. He took all of the sin of mankind upon himself, his sinless self, and he died with it. He took every bad, sinful, wicked thing that you've ever done, every sinful thing that you're doing right now, every sin that you will ever commit, and he died with it. Your sin has been eternally paid for. Now, the only thing left for you to do is to receive by faith what Jesus did for you. Now, how do you do this? By believing with your heart and confessing with your mouth that Jesus lived a sinless life, that he took your sin upon himself and died with it. And on the third day, he rose from the dead, but your sin didn't. So in a moment, I'm going to say a prayer, and I want you to pray this prayer with me. And I want you to pray it out loud. Don't just say it in your heart. Don't just say it in your mind. Say these words out loud. The Bible says, believe with your heart and confess with your mouth. So believe these words that we're about to speak. Believe them in your heart, but say these words out loud with me. Say this, Father in heaven, I thank you for loving me so much that you sent Jesus to be the sacrifice for my sin. Jesus, I thank you for loving me so much that you were willing to suffer and die in my place. You suffered so that I wouldn't have to. You died so that I could live eternally. You took my sin upon yourself and died with it. On the third day, you rose again, but my sin did not. By faith, I receive the price you paid for me, and I thank you for it. I am a Christian. I am born again. I am in right standing with you, God, and I will live for you as you show me how. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, if you said this prayer for the very first time in your life, let me be the first person to welcome you to the family. You are in for a great ride. Now, I would love for you to reach out and contact us. Let us know about the decision that you just made and the prayer that you just prayed with us. I'm not trying to get you to join anything. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not trying to add you to a mailing list. We just want to help you get started with your walk with God. I love being a Christian. I love the life that I live. And I know that you're going to love it too. Faith Life Worship Center in Naples, Florida is a Bible-believing, spirit-filled, non-denominational church. With dynamic children's and youth ministries. There's something for everybody here. If you're looking for a good, solid church. With a contemporary worship experience. A great family atmosphere. With lots of fun. And plenty of great fellowship. Come and join us. Faith Life Worship Center. FaithLifeWorshipCenter.com.